I am a PhD student of National Research University of Information Technology and Mechanics and Optics, and my topic is Issues Tracking System Verification Using Protection Rules Based on Binary Decision Diagrams. Um, I hope most of uh, us are famous with the uh, information issues tracking system and familiar with uh, that piece of software, but I want to point out um, several important things and related to my discussion. First, IPC is a computer software package that manages and maintains list of issues as needed by the organization. It is similar to a bug tracker. Some bug trackers are capable uh, of being used as an IPS and vice versa. Um, issue tracking system is future, a rich future application. It supports different types of reporting, scheduled reports by mail or integrated console notifications, multi-project reports, charts, histograms, Diagrams, customizable workflow, customizable fields, export to different uh, formats, integration with version control system, and so on. And uh, the main part, uh, the smallest element of knowledge is uh, in information tracking systems, call it ticket. Uh, ticket it usually identifies by a number, and tickets can be interconnected via link. Ticket has a field, so for different types. And another one important thing uh, is a workflow. Ticket has a workflow actions dependent on a ticket type. Applying actions leads to moving ticket through a workflow. During that process, ticket is changing its state and allowed actions. Um, so everything is fine, why do we need a verification? First, uh, let's decide that by verification of information tracking system, we mean checking that information is consistent within the given rules. Um, honestly said, say I don't uh, know uh, uh, what is the reason that uh, information and accuracy take place, maybe it usually happens when uh, many um, person try to manage the same piece of knowledge, um, I mean developers and QQA engineers, project managers, and other stuff. So, but uh, in a practice, we can see that information accuracy usually take place takes place in wrong values of fields of a ticket, wrong links between tickets and wrong tracking time of a ticket. Um, the problem is that, that information in occurrence migrates, to, uh, migrates from a ticket to a report and leads to wrong planning, wrong billing numbers. Billing numbers in our case is similar to wrong salary. Does anybody want to get wrong salary? Me not. And, and the, even creation of production environment can happen. Most of ITS systems um, um, can be used for a wide range of projects so far. Uh, ITS allows only syntactic verification in bounds of a single ticket. Uh, proper type of values of field can be checked. Value within proper range also can be checked. But it doesn't have a tool for a customer customizable on-demand analysis. That's why we came up with the idea of using logic production rules for custom, customizable on-demand verification. Um, let's describe our approach in a real-world system taken from a software development project 10 years old. In this project we have uh, several types of tickets, defect reports, for bugs, change requests, for features, design tasks, for designers, requirements, for managers, improvement, and so on. There are a lot of types of link. Um, something duplicates something, introduces, has gone, incorporates, relates, and others. Um, 
Actually, we have to check uh, several assertions, but we, uh, for now, we have developed only one. The, uh, the most important is called the requirements inheritance. Uh, every change request must have a link to a requirement. Every defect report introduced and change request might, must inherit a link to this requirement. And uh, the last one is a recursive rule. Every defect report introduced, in, introduced by another defect report with requirement must inherit a link to the requirement. So our approach is to create knowledge base, uh, extracting all the interested information and run inference engine. And so we have to decide what domains we should use. In our project, it is simple. We have our ticket domains and requirement domains. But actually, the requirements are subclass of tickets, but we decided to divide them into separate domains. Uh, we encode every link with binary predicate as follows. Uh, also, we encode every property of a ticket with a binary predicate. Uh, having predicates and domains, we are ready to define rules. First rules defines predicate called introduces all. It gets uh, all introduces tuples and uh, inverse introduced by tuples. Next rules are, in fact, transitive closure by property introduces all. The fifth uh, rule specify how requirement migrates and uh, inherits to the introduces tickets. And the last one uh, is auxiliary predicate called requirement for fail that contains all tuples uh, that are um, not, uh, not uh, suitable for our systems that are wrong and uh, have to be fixed. Our knowledge base is done. Let's take a look at the system architecture. Uh, first. The first model is a data extraction package. It's, it's, it, it's responsible for extraction uh, for extraction information from issue tracking system. Somehow it could use uh, queries to the underlying database so it can be used uh, ITS IP or even HTTP request. In our case we just use HTTP requests to underline ITS system. Uh, knowledge base creation model is uh, rather flexible. It allows you to specify only um, property or link that you are interested in and you will get uh, automatically domain, effects will be filled and predicates will be filled automatically. Then having uh, this stuff and the rules written by analyst, we are ready to run logic inference and, and after that we are got answers as an auxiliary predicates if there are contain some information and they are not empty that's we have that I have a deal to fix wrong facts and we have to um, keep looping until all our auxiliary predicates are not empty. Um, actually, I would like to point out that inference engine is important. In our system, it's a um, it's module that can be uh, changed uh, or uh, interchanged with, uh, other, with others. But we, uh, we have been developing our own uh, production rule reasoner called Panda. It based on binary decision diagrams. And we did several um, comparable experiments with the uh, reasoners employed different approach. Uh, 
We choose this, it's pure data book implementation, we choose chances based on RT and our own based on binary decision diagrams. Mm. This is a set of rules as suitable for first one and for last one. And this is the same rules encoded into JS language. They are slightly bit different, but they are in fact the same. So we did a performance experiment on our small, uh, small assertion rule that called requirement inheritance. First figure is amount of fat that we are interested in. The second, third, and fourth are numbers represented. Uh, numbers represents. Um, time in my milliseconds. It, it easily can be seen that Panda beat up this two times more and uh, it shows performance um, the same as the Jazz. But these figures are quite tricky because it's milliseconds and uh, we assume that the knowledge base is not enough big. So we can see that uh, our reasoner the same as test and the JS. But uh, we will do uh, other experiments and we will implement other assertions. So knowledge base uh, will be huge. And we think, we hope that our reasoner will be as good as JS at least. Thank you.